Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Petros Foray. In this computer science video, you will learn about programming concepts. Some of the key ways that you will be dealing with are debug, syntax, execute, program, code, run, compile. Your vocabulary will be enriched with a lot of these programming terms as we go on developing your skills. It is important for us to understand what a program is as a starting point. In computing terms, a program is a set of instructions written in a computer language. So these instructions are in a logical sequence. They are in order. They are performed one after the other. It's important to note that computers work just like human beings. Computers are programmed to execute or to perform a specific task. It's important to know that programming, obviously, is the process of creating programs or writing instructions. So there are several languages which are there, which can be used for programming. Just like we have so many languages which we speak, we have English, we have Espanol, algunas personas hablan Espanol, some people speak Spanish, just like I was saying. So we speak different languages, but our main issue is we get down to understand and we perform actions based on the words that we hear. Programming languages are different languages which are used with their vocabulary, which is the grammatical rules in computing terms. So these syntaxes are then written in a specific order, telling the computer what to do. Remember, the computer will not be able to do anything if the user does not instruct it. That's why programmers are so much in demand today because of creating software that will perform different tasks. Before we go any further, I would want you to know that a program is actually a set of instruction and also can be referred to as a code. And a program is at the same time software so when you are talking about software, you talk about pro a program, you talk about a code, it's one and the same thing. There are two levels of programming languages which are there. The first one is known as the low-level programming language. And secondly, we do have the high-level programming languages. In the low-level language, these are programming languages which are closer to the language of the computer. I want you to know that computers only understand binary, which is the machine language. And this language is only written in zeros and ones. There are actually two low-level languages which are there. We do have what you call the machine language, which is the binary, like I was indicating. Sometimes you hear some people refer it to as the binary or machine code. Secondly, we have what we call the assembly language. Assembly language is another low-level programming language. These two programming languages have one thing in common. They are machine-dependent. So you create one program for one machine. Imagine how difficult it used to be during the early days of computers when you would have one computer maybe in the whole country. And that computer needed to be programmed and they were running on low-level languages. So it was specific programs for that unique computer. And the program would not be able to be copied to another computer. Life must have been very difficult. So the machine code is written in zeros and ones. But the problem is, it's so easy to make mistakes when you are programming in the machine code. Reading it would be so difficult. You need to be an expert. And some of these programs are written in hexadecimal format. One thing about the machine code, which is the machine language, programs which are written, because this is the only language the computers understand, it means they do not need to be translated. These programs are extremely fast. They are the fastest programs which are there because they don't need to be translated. But, like I mentioned, correcting them and writing them is quite a tedious process because they need so much time. And chances of making mistakes are very high. But take note, they are machine dependent, made only for that particular hardware. 
assembly language is another type of a low level language but one thing with assembly language you use monomic codes which is abbreviated english words these are short codes which are like lda which is like load data in the accumulator sto that's a command for storing data add which is add so there are so many but you are having these instructions given in monomic codes like this obviously this must be a little bit easier compared to the machine language because this is closer to what we are used to one thing about the assembly language because these commands are not in machine code you need to get them translated into the language of the computer so you will need a translator program called an assembler that will convert your program into machine language so these are some of the instructions which you use in the assembly language programming ldaa simply means load accumulator a with the value 20. so these are just examples and then when we have add the value 10 to the accumulator this is add a, a 10 which means 10 into the accumulator and store this is the storing instruction so as you can see it is a little bit friendly as to the fact that we are using english like commands to give instructions to the computer now some of the characteristics which are there programs which are in assembly language are also machine dependent they cannot be used in other computers but the good thing because they are machine dependent that makes them fast so when you are creating programs in assembly language these programs will be very fast compared to what we are going to see later in high level languages but they have to be translated using an assembler to machine code is the assembly language still being used today yes when you are programming the cpu you are telling the cpu what to do when cpu programming is actually done using the assembly language when you are running maybe an adm cpu you are using an intel cpu how they program them they program them specifically for that type of a processor so takes us now to what we call the higher level languages these ones are languages which are programmer oriented these languages use instructions which are very much like english statements they are easy to write because it's directly oriented to the programmer one advantage about these ones they are machine independent so what happens is you create a program you can copy it to several different computers and those people can use it it simply means a lot of programs that we are using these days on our computers are created using high level languages that's why you are able to copy the same program and you run it on a different computer and with mobile phones we do have mobile app application sites like play store and the app store where you can download apps which have been created for you millions of people can download the same app and use it independently on their devices that is one big advantage of these high level languages they are easy to write they are easy to make corrections they are not tedious because you can follow through even if you get a program that someone else created you can read through the syntaxes and get to understand what they're trying to do unlike what we have when you deal with low level languages but because these programs are in english instructions they need to be converted into machine code or machine language because computers do not understand english computers only understand the binary language which is zeros and ones so they need to be converted into machine language and this is done using some two translator programs one of them is called the compiler and the other one is called an interpreter the compiler obviously translates the whole program at a go all of it converting it into machine code from source code to object code which means you now have a new program that is now in low level machine language this interpreter it converts instruction at a time programmers will use the interpreter more when they are creating programs 
So you are going to see that the interpreter is going to be the tool that you are going to use a lot when you are creating programs because it translates instruction at a time. It makes it easy to correct mistakes. With the compiler, it won't give you that chance. It will compile and change the whole program into machine code. If there are any errors there, it will tell you there are errors. But then, how can you identify errors in a program that has like over a thousand lines? That becomes difficult. So the interpreter becomes handy. But when you finish correcting your work and everything is perfect, you use a compiler because you just want it now to be converted and take that program into object code which is what distributors will be distributing. Because when you are selling your programs or software, you don't sell the original programs because it could be copied and people will go and modify and create their own programs. The high-level programs are easy to debug. By the way, debugging is the process of removing or correcting mistakes from a program. They enable programmers to be creative. What are the examples of high-level languages? Fortran. Kobo, it's an example of a high-level language. Um, Kobo standing for common business-oriented languages. Then we have BASIC, which is beginners or purpose symbolic instruction code. We also have Pascal, okay, C++, Python, Java. And some of these ones, they are highly used these days. You will be, you know, learning a lot of these languages. For example, Python, Java, a lot of universities and institutions out there uh, using these languages in their computer science programs. Programming is an important concept that we have to learn. And from this day, I want to encourage you to start learning a programming language. And the starting point is Python. Have a pleasant day and please don't forget to like the video and also post and comment below. Have a pleasant day.